What up, Mark Pot? Big question. Wanted to ask. Simple question. Just one today. Is Nick Hugo good enough to win or to lead Run DMV to a championship? He just became the first player in SimWorld Hoops history to be named Player of the Week in consecutive weeks. He did it after averaging 18 points per game. It comes on the heels of a Player of the Week honor that the 21 and 17 against Middle East plus the 11 block performance against Atlantis, a Sim World record. He now has, including that game, three double doubles in his last four games, but he doesn't strike as a traditional number one guy. And when you look at Run DMV, the question is can he be the number one guy? That's long been my reservation on Run DMV. They do not have a guy that's in the same vein as DJ Wagner, Bronny James, Trey Turner. But they're still a really good team. And the way Nick Hugo has been playing recently could have completely changed this entire outlook for Run DMV. Run DMV does not have a go-to perimeter score. Yes, Camarion Bracken can have good games, 12.2 points. Yes, Trey Trust can be electric from deep, 60 made threes, 52% from beyond the arc. Heck, now Nick Hugo leads the team in three-pointers made with two, or three-point percentage with two, because he's two for three. But the way Nick Hugo has played recently, and most specifically, as I talked about last week, how Run DMV has played against top teams, this is not a passing trend. And yes, they had the three-game losing streak that superseded this most recent three-game winning streak that they're on. But this team is Jekyll and Hyde. But they are on their game at the most critical moments. So with their two wins, they are now 8-2 and two against top teams. But they just look like a different team in those. And we'll get to why Nick Hugo, I think, can in fact be a player that leads them. But they are now 8-2 and two against top teams. But what's changed about Run DMV against those top teams is the way they've played defensively. Now, I've removed the 108 game. Uh, the triple overtime game that, that they lost. So this number isn't perfect. But in the nine games that game excluded, their defense is averaging 67.3 points per game. That'd be good for eighth in the league. On the season, of course, that does include the, the 108. But that wouldn't drastically change our number too much. But on the season, they're allowing 70.3 points per game, which is 26th. So in games against top teams, again, one game aside, a a multiple overtime thriller, their defense has been the 8th best in the league on the season 70.3, so 26th best. So what does that tell you? It tells you about in those games, not only did they have that big loss, but they're also giving up a lot more points than 70 as you try to, not a lot more, they're giving up more points than 70, certainly more points than 67. Because his defense arrives at the moments in which they need them to. And again, as we talked about briefly on the podcast last week and and talked about it before when talking about Showtime, the great thing about the playoffs for these teams that play well against great teams is that's all you're going to play is great teams. And as it stands right now in the race to one outlook, Run DMV just one game back of Gotham 5, and they're in four. So they'd get a Beast of the East matchup in the first round. Team that they have now split the season series after having gotten the win 60, or excuse me, 78-66. That comes after a uh, 78-57 loss earlier in the season uh, for Beast of the East, or for Gotham 5, rather, of the loss. But this is now a team that's positioned themselves within striking distance of the top spot in the division, which would lock in a top three seed. They've given themselves some semblance of of a lead over top of Beast of the East and beyond the arch for a top five team, or top you know, five, five seed. But the big question that I continue to go back to is Nick Hugo good enough? Now, he's won back-to-back player of the weeks, which would seem to indicate, yes, he is, in fact, the best player on this team. Meanwhile, you look at the rest of their ranked players, uh, 
Nick Hugo coming in at a composite ranking of 48 is in fact the highest ranked player on this team. Camarion Bracken 98, Trey Trust 60. Now, are player rankings the end-all be-all? Of course not. Of course not. But as we've seen recently, guys like Trey Trust, he hasn't scored in double figures in any of the last four games and only once in the last five, despite a guy that had three 20-point outings. Camarion Bracken has been up and down. Um, won just two games in the last quite a few. In his last two, he had 50% or better field goal pursuit air shooting from the floor. Those are the first times that he had done that since May 29th. So the entire month of June, he was sub 50%. And enter Nick Hugo. Nick Hugo has carried this team on both ends of the floor. He's, he's actually, his zero blocks against Beast of the East was the first game he hadn't had a block since June 6th. And he's been racking up, obviously, including that 11-block performance, big games. He's had five straight games of double-figure scoring and seven of the last eight, the lone exception being a nine-point game against Sim World Africa, which we're actually going to talk about here in just one second. So why are we talking about it? What has Nick Hugo done most recently that makes you think that he's good enough to be the number one guy on a title team and why we should rethink... Not completely, but add caveats to an ever-growing, how do we figure out what a team is? How do we figure out what a championship team actually looks like? So this is the most startling statistic for me, beyond the fact that Nick Hugo is back-to-back players of the player of the week, deservedly so, 22 and 12 against Beasts of the East, and seven and nine, or 14 and nine against Gotham Five. But one thing that stands out for Nick Hugo is in eight games in which he has put up double-figure shot attempts, that would be beginning in April 22nd, as his, his run got a substantially larger after that. In those eight games, Run DMV is 7-1. and one. Their lone loss that game to Africa, a disappointing one, a surprising one, uh, would be the first, let's see here, uh, that would be the first of three straight losses that they would lose then to reigning trays and then to Atlantis before going on this three-game winning streak to close uh, or to t- kick off the month of of July. But outside of that game, anytime Nick Hugo has put up double-figure shot attempts, Run DMV has won. Now, I don't think that Run DMV gets a championship or, or wins a championship because Nick Hugo goes nuclear on offense. That's not really their calling card. But what we've seen as of late, and especially what we've seen in the last two weeks, is that in more broad scale since April 22nd, what we've seen is that Run DMV has identified a very simple approach. And it's one that I think is very reminiscent of peak dynasty San Antonio Spurs. They have a dominant big man who is incredibly talented inside and defensively. Nick Hugo. Not going to put up huge stats, but he's going to put up consistent numbers. Now, Nick Hugo most recently has, in fact, put up big stats, but his season average, 10 points, 7.2 boards. You extrapolate some of his numbers and you want to take out those early season, basically April 18th and on, because before that, he had three zero-point performances, one two-point and one three-point outing. Since April 18th, Nick Hugo has scored under 10 points twice. So he's starting to put up numbers that are not eye-popping, just like Tim Duncan. When you look at Tim Duncan's numbers, you don't look at it and say, wow, this guy's this guy's dominant. But he impacted the game in so many different ways. But the most biggest reason, I should say, for why this team looks like the San Antonio Spurs is because of the head coach. Their head coach continues to put them in good situations, continues to get up, understands the games in which they do need to play, and the ones where the light switch doesn't need to be all the way on. Now, fortunately for Run DMV this season, they've been dominant when that switch has been on. You wouldn't necessarily want to rely on that for seasons going forward, but the combination of a light switch Nick Hugo's aggression and timely aggression and the fact that the man behind the wheel knows what he's doing, this shouldn't surprise anybody, but Run DMV is a legitimate title contender. How legitimate, though, I think continues to rise every single day 
as they continue to beat very, very talented teams that are put in front of them. They're going to get more shots at it. Originators in two games, July 19th. Close out with Cascadia, who's fringe to the playoffs. Bad Boys Basketball on the 20th. There's more proof to be made from Run DMV, but if the past has told us anything, and if most recently Nick Hugo's past has told us anything, this team is a very serious contender for the race to one. 